It has been four years since I've tested a new mouse out. Because what can I say? When you find something you like, why continue testing just for the sake of testing? Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Logitech G203 LightSync. This is very similar to the Logitech G203 Prodigy, but you might notice it's doing something that the Prodigy can't. And that's the big difference between the two. This one has an RGB lighting mechanism. This is a, what I'm going to call, and may get some flack for, a intro gaming mouse. It can be used as an everyday mouse, which is actually what my wife is using it for because she's the one who is in need of a new mouse. When I say this is the most basic of mice, let me show you the packaging that you actually get. It's Logitech does definitely streamline the process. It's a cardboard box with basic information and the mouse itself. Speaking of the mouse itself, you are looking at pretty much just flat matte plastic all the way around. There are no grippy surfaces on this anywhere, and some people might enjoy that. I prefer a little more texture when, when I'm grabbing a mouse, but the flat matte plastic does offer a little texture to it. It's not rubberized or anything like that, but it is rough enough that you can kind of get a grip on it. As you can see, it does pick up uh, sweat a little bit and you can kind of see gloss from actual use. So it will show where. That's not terrible in any way, shape or form. The top of it, you have four programmable buttons. You have your left click, your right click, your center, which normally is to change your DPI out, and then your scroll wheel, which also acts as a click. Now, we'll bring that scroll wheel up into frame. You can see it is, it is a little dusty, uh, and that's the problem. This is rubberized as it has a center click, but no left right click. It is a nice large wheel, so you do have a lot to grip onto. And like I said, it's, it's thicker than most scrolling wheels, so that is a nice feature. Although, as you can see, it does collect dust quite easily. As mentioned, that is your DPI, but that can be all changed in software, which we will talk about a little later. You have your left and right click, and I do like the very large channels that you have. You'll notice that there is a slight, if I can get that to focus right, a slight slope. So your finger kind of slides in there very nicely. And I'll show you the actual click sound of this. but it does have a very satisfying click sound and feel, and it is a very nice large channel for both your fingers to, to rest in, which I greatly appreciate. Coming back to the back of the mouth, you do get a nice little hump back here, so that if you are doing your standard resting grip, you know, you're gonna palm that very nicely. You'll notice even with small to medium sized hands, I'll probably go more on the small, I kinda have two fingers that are off the mouse itself and really only have the two and then palmed. Over on the side, you do not have any real indent for the side of the mouse where your forward and back buttons are. These again are programmable and be changed. Uh, they're easy to find, but they kind of blend into the rest of the mouse in that they're just smooth plastic. So I haven't found myself missing the buttons because you know, they're large enough, but they definitely don't have the tactile feel or rubberized texture that I'd be looking for for something on the side. The right side of the mouse, there is nothing to look at, just the textured plastic as we talked about before. Front of the mouse, you have a wired connection. This wired connection here is plugged into my computer, so I'm not able to grab as much as I would like there so that we get that nice cool lighting effect. The cable itself is just about six feet in length. I like the fact that it is not the braided cable. I, I never liked braided cables, so I'm happy that this is not braided. It's a nice, pliable rubberized material, so you will get some bend. It is thinner than some of the mice that I've had in the past from Logitech, and I'm happy they're kind of shrinking that down, make things a little nicer. On the back, the big accent piece is the large Logitech G and swoosh back here, which is pulsating through the RGB possibilities, which will be covered in the software. Flipping the mouse over to the bottom here, we have four and one around the sensor, PTFE feet, which is pretty much like Teflon feet for smoother mousing. 
And the durability on these, supposedly by Logitech, is 250 kilometers. I can say as long as you're using this on a mouse pad, you should be fine. If you're using it on a slightly harder surface, you will wear these down a little faster. The sensor on this is not terrible. It's not great either for the budget price that you're paying for this. You're looking at a between 200 to 8,000 DPI with this particular sensor. Flip this over to go over some of the specifications, which I probably should have covered earlier. You have a height of 4.5 inches in length. You have a width of 2.4 and a depth at the highest point here in the back of 1.5. So it is a small to medium sized mouse. The weight is also 2.99 ounces or 85 grams. So it is a very lightweight mouse, like really, really light. There is no way to add weight to this via inserted weights. So just know that this is the package that you're getting. There is onboard memory with this, which will allow you to program all of your buttons and change the light sync. You've got two options with this. You either have the Logitech G hub, which is generally what most people use with this, or there's actually the onboard memory hub that you can get from Logitech. So depending on what you actually want to do with this mouse, whether you're using it on your primary gaming device, or if you're gonna be taking this with you, you have two software choices. So why don't we actually take a look at the two software options that we can utilize with this mouse. We are going to start things off looking at the Logitech G hub. Here we can see, Got my mouse plugged in. I select the mouse I want to activate. And here we have DPI settings. So you could set your points for DPI all along this bar. You could drag, drop wherever you need. You've got your defaults here. You can assign to a mouse. And then you have report rate per response. I have it set at 1000 right now. You can also select restore default settings for everything with the mouse. We're gonna come over here to assignment because this is where you're gonna be able to actually assign a option for all of the six mouse buttons. Obviously you would select the mouse button that you want to do. And then you can come in here and you can select from a whole bunch of presets as to what that mouse button will do. You also have options for key binding and actions. Here you'll notice that it is accessible with Overwolf, Discord, and OBS, which is awesome. We also have the ability to create macros. So if you need to create macros for your MMORPG, here's how you can set up a new macro type the name of the macro. We're not going to go through that. Just know that you can create macros using this mouse. System, again, here we go. Lots of options for us for assigning system controls to the mouse. Moving along to the light sync, because this is definitely what you're here for. This is why you bought this instead of the Prodigy. We've got our presets. We have lots of different effects, so we can turn this off. We can cycle, or we can fix. So fix means you will, and this is exactly what it looks like on the mouse as I'm using it. Fixed is a solid state color. You can change that color as you wish. So if we wanted to make that red, there you go. Now it's fixed at red. Selecting cycle is what you were watching while I was filming. It's going to cycle through all the possible colors. You have your rate change and your brightness. Breathing, again, you could specify your color and it will do exactly what it's doing here. You'll have that fade in and fade out effect. Color wave, well, here we go. It's going to do a horizontal in this case color wave, we can do a reverse horizontal, but you'll notice that it's going to shift from left to right, color waving. Color blend, here you go. Blending of the colors. So blue to purples, reds to pinks, you get the idea. Moving on, audio visualer. So this is going to be listening to your computer to match the sound that it hears, playing music, video games, things like that, and have your, your mouse visualize those sounds. You have your advanced settings here. I won't go through these, but just know that's what it's at. I'm going to go back to cycle just so we have something to look at. You've got your option for freestyle. So you have effect, you can add a new effect. Here you can obviously see, we could change the color of the effects. And here you've got your particular lighting zones that you can set. So I want to have hypothetically a red effect here. On this one here, I want more of a green effect there. And then over on this one, we will set a yellow-ish. So there we go. You can see that is a particular lighting effect. On the screen, it doesn't look as good, but I promise the effect on the mouse itself, I'll insert a picture of actually what that looks like. And I will say, hopefully the picture does it justice because it actually is kind of a cool effect. You also have your ability for animations. You've got, here we go. This is the first time I popped over into this one. Ocean wave, red, white, and blue. So Again, what you see on screen is exactly what the mouse is doing. And then you can cycle random bounce, all that. I think you get the idea of what you can do with the color effects here. Now, 
if you wanted to move to the onboard memory, instead of using the G hub, what you have to do is come up to the upper left hand corner, select the sprocket, and then you select onboard memory on, and then this device will turn to onboard memory. We now move over to the next piece of software, which is, which is the onboard memory. From here, you can see this is the mouse we currently have selected. We've got profile one. We have our DPI set points. We also actually have an extra one right there. We can see our refresh rate. We can see the light is cycling. On this particular screen, you can't see that, but if we wanted to, we can select off and then hit save. And what that will do is no longer will the mouse cycle through. That's actually how my wife prefers it. We have our button assignments here. When you are using your onboard memory, you cannot change left click and right click, but you can change every other mouse button. So here you go. You've got drop down options for each and every one of those, which is great. And then you can also select identify button, which means if I press it, it will tell you exactly what button it is. You can also enable default or change it to G shift, which will pretty much blank everything out and let you change everything. I recommend default because you kind of need that left click and right click. But that has been the Logitech G Hub and the onboard memory controls for the Logitech G203 LightSync. As you saw from the two software options, there's lots of customization you can do with this basic mouse. And I keep saying that this is a basic mouse because I feel comparatively to some of the other mice over there in the corner that I've reviewed and called them intro gaming mice, this is definitely one. So who is this mouse for? Well, I'm going to say this is for anybody who's looking for, like I said, an intro gaming mouse, but also anybody who's looking for an everyday mouse. My wife uses this primarily for her computer at home, but she's doing a lot of things from video editing to gaming to actual like clerical work, spreadsheets, things like that. This nice thick mouse wheel in the front there is great for that. The biggest plus for this mouse and why it's a great mouse in my opinion is the price depending on where you pick this up and if there's any sales, you can get this between 30 and $15. That $15, keep an eye on Amazon, they have sales all the time. In fact, that's when we picked this one up. Her mouse was going out, we needed a new mouse, Amazon had a lightning deal on it, picked it up for $15. For $15, you can't go wrong with this. $30, it's still a good mouse. $15, it is an exceptional mouse. So I'll have a link to this in the description area below for Amazon. Keep an eye on it, look out for those sales. When it's on sale, I would jump on this because like I said, if you're looking for a little flair for the classic G203 Prodigy and at the price point of $15, you're going to find that very difficult to beat. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.